So what we have here on the bench then is the uh, first 5G antenna for us to uh, take a look at on, on this channel. Well, the first true 5G uh, antenna anyway. Um, it's a uh, multiple band antenna, so it covers 3G, 4G, 5G. Um, it works from uh, 698 megahertz all the way up to uh, 3.8 gigahertz so the higher frequencies are where the uh, 5g is um we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but uh, i want to quickly take it over to the bench and see what it looks like over all those frequencies because it is uh, an extremely uh, wideband antenna and i'm really interested to see what's on the inside of this so let's take it over to the test bench and then have a look at the uh, frequencies and uh, see what they look like on the network analyzer and then we'll have a uh, little talk about this antenna and then we'll take it apart just to see what's inside so here's the antenna on the uh, test setup and uh, i'm using a different uh, directional coupler for this uh, i usually use the uh, simple black ones but the black ones only go up to well they go up to three gigahertz but uh, i don't really trust them beyond uh, 2.6 gigahertz but this one goes up all the way to uh, six and a half gigahertz all the way down to 10 megahertz so uh, this one is going to be fine for this testing so let's have a look at the network analyzer so on the network analyzer at the moment we're scanning from uh, 2.3 gigahertz over here all the way up to four gigahertz over here so we're going to look at uh, the bands uh, 2.4 gigahertz to uh, 2.70 gigahertz and uh, 2.8 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz so starting off here we can see we're at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and we can go all the way down to this first dip here 2.6 gigahertz going up there still looking good at 2.8 8 gigahertz now this is where uh, the uh, 5g speed comes from now we've got this bit of a bump in the road here but uh, then we come down to this second dip and this is uh, 3.5 gigahertz going down 3.6 gigahertz going down 3.8 gigahertz so basically uh, this second dip here this is where your uh, speed is coming from your 5g speed and uh, here it states that the antenna works at 3 db of gain which is probably correct um, in this uh, first dip here which is um, you can say 4g that's uh, working at around uh, 4 db in the 2.4 gigahertz region all the way up to about 2.8 gigahertz there so you can see the differences and why sometimes I comment when I know from experience what a uh, frequency response looks like. It gives me a, you know, a clue as to how well uh, the antenna will work game-wise. But uh, yeah, that seems to be about right there. 4 dB in that uh, dip just there and over here. Not as strong, but uh, 3 dB. So these are the uh, two other frequencies then we're uh, scanning from uh, 400 megahertz over here all the way up to 2.2 uh, gigahertz and we can see this lovely wide dip here in the lower frequencies and we tend to see that a lot with uh, these antennas that claim to work over the full uh, spectrum there for the uh, 3G, 4G, LTE and uh, now this one that uh, works at uh, 5G they always seem to uh, perform better in the lower frequencies and this one is no different of course uh, in this dip here it claims to work at uh, 5 dBm of gain and I've got no reason to dispute that at all uh, we're looking around here that's uh, 690 megahertz going all the way down the dip there 1 gigahertz all the way up there it, it does claim to work from uh, six sorry almost 700 megahertz to uh, one gigahertz but you can see there it also works a little bit beyond that frequency as well now um, the uh, second frequency is 1710 megahertz to uh, 2170 megahertz and this is this dip all the way over here so we're at seven 1800 megahertz there this dip is apparently again a 3 db dip 
and uh, you know if we compare it to the uh, 5G uh, higher frequency dip it uh, looks roughly about the same one point uh, sorry uh, 1700 megahertz there going all the way up to almost 1900 just over so yeah, not quite to, to one but we'll keep going and there's this other little dip just here so maybe they're counting that and uh, you know this is the problem with these antennas that claim to do all the frequencies they do a couple of frequencies really well and uh, you know a couple of frequencies uh, really poorly but uh, you can see at those lower frequencies it's going to perform uh, really well for that and uh, that's where you get the most gain from as well the 5 dB of gain and uh, you know uh, it is what it is it's a uh, omnidirectional um, dual uh, band antenna um, if you want an upgrade then uh, you know find out which is your strongest signal in your area if you're getting the uh, 4G signal in the uh, sub uh, sorry the uh, 2 gigahertz to uh, 2.7 gigahertz range really strong concentrate on an antenna for uh, that frequency and same for 5G as well you know if you get a really good uh, 5G signal in your area which uh, you know 5G masks uh, are starting to get rolled out now and uh, you know concentrate on the, the 5G signal and just use some of these lower frequencies as a uh, kind of backup just to read your email where the higher frequencies uh, you can do all of your streaming and everything else on the internet now overall this antenna it looks uh, and feels pretty good I mean we've got some really nice uh, coax here and you want some low loss coax uh, for a 5G antenna for those uh, higher frequencies now 5G is just a term um, you know for the next generation of uh, the cellular networks it's kind of uh, you know incumbent on all the uh, frequencies that we had previously with the 3G and the 4G plus the new higher frequencies and they're all bolted together and called 5G but um, the higher frequencies are the ones that uh, are now operating on the 5G um, networks and that's where you get your speed from basically uh, higher frequencies have bigger pipes you can stick more information down those pipes than you can at the uh, you know the uh, lower frequencies there so if you can imagine when uh, you know 3g was around <laughs> you were sat waiting for a uh, jpeg photo to turn up on your phone and uh, with 4g you were sat waiting for the youtube video to load and now uh, with the 5g with that higher frequency you can now watch that youtube video in uh, 1080p quite easily as long as you're near a uh, 5g mast of course so let's open this up and uh, take a look on the uh, inside of this just to see uh, what we've got i mean uh, have we just got a simple omnidirectional dipole uh, element a lot like the uh, cisco element that we took a look at recently but uh, its form factor is really small so let's crack it open and have a look so this took a uh, quite a bit of gentle persuasion to uh, remove the case it is screw th thread on here but uh, they did glue the threads into the case so that wasn't an option but uh, now we can see the inside and it's interesting but it's also underwhelming it's a uh, simple monopole antenna now i've desoldered this just so i can take some measurements of it and now we can take a closer look i just wanted to explain a little bit more why i consider this to be a uh, monopole antenna basically a monopole antenna with three elements if we take the measurement of this uh, first element here which is the shorter one it's coming in at uh, 30 millimeters there now 30 millimeters is around about the middle of the uh, 2 gigahertz range um 2.4 gigahertz is around uh, 31.25 millimeter so you know off the top of my head it's about the middle of uh, the 2 gigahertz range now because it's quite wide and thick around here now that measurement is about 16 millimeters thick and then tapered off uh, as we've seen recently in a couple of videos where we've looked at the sleeve monopole um, adding uh, you know a greater thickness can increase the bandwidth and this element here is working at the uh, 2.4 gigahertz range to uh, around uh, 
you know the 3.8 gigahertz range that's this element that's doing all the work in that area this uh, middle element here i'll take a measurement on this one is around 36 30 uh, 36.5 millimeters uh, long and that's doing all the work in the uh, 1700 megahertz to uh, 2.17 uh, gigahertz range so that's the middle one there and the final one here which has uh, got all the gain that measurement comes in at around 63 millimeters there and that's doing all the work at uh, the 700 megahertz to uh, 960 megahertz uh, it's got the length there for the wavelength and it's also tapered quite thick at the top so you get that extra bandwidth uh, this is the thinner one and that's where we uh, you know we don't see so much bandwidth with uh, that one in particular but uh, that's uh, basically what we're do they're doing here it's all mathematics and uh, all this tapering and widening is increasing that bandwidth and that's why I do believe that this we can uh, class it as a uh, monopole with three driven elements now then this is the uh, first uh, 5G antenna that we've taken a look at on this channel or at least an antenna that works uh, at the 5G frequencies now this antenna certainly does work at the 5g uh, frequencies and i've just had a look and this antenna did actually cost me uh, 31 pounds and uh, i think a couple of pounds for shipping i can't quite remember but uh, you know 30 pounds is pretty pricey for uh, what this is i would have to question the uh, 5db of its maximum gain i think that you know the maybe stretching it a little bit but even so, it's uh, an external antenna that the maximum gain is 5 dB and that's at the uh, lower frequencies where uh, your speed and your pipes are smaller, you're not going to get as much data flow. Um, so you, you can class that as uh, you know a slow connection. Now the fastest connection is obviously up at the higher frequencies, uh, the 5G, and uh, you know that uh, higher frequency is 2.8 gigahertz to 3 0.8 gigahertz and you're only getting 3 db at that range now do you really want to stick an antenna with such low gain on the outside of your home you know i i personally wouldn't do that i mean an antenna like this for an indoor antenna uh, connected to the back of your uh, uh, router for example then yes you know it, it's not a problem but i wouldn't go to the extent of permanently mounting this on uh, the outside of my home uh, it's just not a uh, powerful antenna if you're going to do that then you know stick something with at least 6 db um you know on the side of your house you know 8 db something like that now my thoughts on an antenna like this and uh, you may uh, differ from my thoughts i mean um i've discussed this on my facebook group before and uh, you know i don't have a lot of experience with uh, cellular routers i've never had to use one i've always been uh, you know blessed with uh, a uh, fiber optic connection since early 2001 um, but uh, obviously I do use it out and about uh, with my phone but uh, not as much as uh, most people now if uh, you are needing to uh, get a fast uh, connection over the cellular network uh, with a dedicated router 4g router 5g router uh, let's say and you want to mount some external antennas um, in my view it's better to do a site survey see uh, you know if, if you're strong in those higher frequencies because they've got the bigger pipes that's where you're going to get the speed from and if uh, you've got uh, you know several mass in your area pumping out those higher frequencies then I would just concentrate on those higher frequencies. I wouldn't go looking for an antenna that covers everything like this one does. I'd just stick a high gain antenna on there that uh, covers those uh, higher frequencies. I wouldn't worry too much about the uh, lower frequencies. Um, of course, uh, with a mobile phone, you are uh, taking this out and about. So you need something inside there that can pick up everything. I mean, uh, you can still go into rural areas here in the UK and uh, get a... Uh, 2g connection or even worse let's say um so in that uh, situation you always want to be connected so you want an antenna that's going to pick up everything in your phone but in your home uh, there's really no need to be sniffing out those uh, 
uh, frequencies at around uh, 600, uh, 700 megahertz to uh, 960 megahertz. If uh, you're strong in the uh, upper frequencies, concentrate on them. But that's my thought on this anyway, and I really wouldn't stick this on the outside of my home, not with it being so low gain. But uh, it's an interesting design all the same. It's the first 5G antenna we've uh, taken a look at on this channel. So to conclude then, I will make a PDF of this pattern and uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to download and have a go at etching this out yourself. I'm kind of thinking whether you could uh, turn this into a directional uh, antenna, a uh, directional uh, panel antenna, but uh, you know, uh, by the time you start factoring the uh, air gap and uh, the back reflector and everything else, you can mess up the mathematics of this. It's not always quite so simple it can change the uh, frequencies not by much but uh, you know it, it depending on the dielectric you use i mean i'd stick to an air gap dielectric and uh, uh, that doesn't affect it too much compared to some other materials but uh, you know uh, as i said 30 pounds for this 31 pounds for this uh, you know I'd, I'd save you money and uh, you know if you really uh, want to um, get a, a decent 5g or a, a decent higher 4G uh, signal in there at those higher frequencies. Maybe look for a uh, better directional antenna to put on your home. Uh, personally, I wouldn't uh, shell out £30 for this. Um, you know, even if you stuck it on the outside of your home uh, with those dBs, um, I think you'd be a little bit disappointed. So it's always interesting to take a look at uh, antennas like this. As I say, any uh, comments or questions, if you've got different opinions, yeah, please feel free to uh, let me know as i say i'll include uh, a link to the uh, pdf um, for the uh, artwork for this um, if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and uh, comments or questions as i say drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one